opportunity mm. here. I always tell people if a new big box, right, a Brookdale Sunrise Atrium just got built in your market, mm -hmm. bingo. You want your home. Are right those at the names doorstep. of like residential assisted living areas? Well, big Retirement. facilities. Yeah. yeah, like those like commercial ones, you know, yeah. hundreds of beds. Yeah. Okay. You don't know a Brookdale? <laughs> You've driven by them a thousand times. You live in Arizona. <laughs> I believe if I if I'm being honest, I think I had to go to one of those yeah. to get a seller to sign a contract. Yeah. I oh, oh, <laughs> I probably. believe that was the circumstance. <laughs> Yeah. It's Arizona. I'm sure now you're going to drive by. It's going to be I'm red, see them everywhere. red Corvette syndrome. They're going to be yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, so density, you want to make sure that there's a need in the area. Those big boxes, they're spending millions on internal feasibility studies to determine if this is a good place for it. So mm. if there's a new one coming up, bingo, put yours as close to that as possible. Yeah. Um, you also want to make sure that, you know, we have to have people who work in the home. So if we're in a super nice area, but there's no workforce around, that's not going to work either. You have to have that good in between where you have a workforce, but you're also near daughter Judy mm -hmm. and you're still near everything else that you need. You know, this isn't over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. You know, you have to make sure that everything that you need is right around it. So definitely location is key. And then you get into renovating the home, right? So most people want private bedrooms, private bathrooms, like we were saying mm -hmm. earlier. The states will require you to have 80 to 100 square feet per person. Okay. That is tiny. Like, if we're 10 people in a home, that is way too small. We like to say 300 to 500 square feet per mm -hmm. person. So minimum with 10 people, a 3,000 square foot home, upwards of 5,000. So having a larger footprint already to start with is nice because then you have to chop it up less inside. Um, you can do it with multi-level. You've got to add in a chairlift, add in an elevator. In Arizona, we're lucky there's a lot of single-level homes. Yeah. Um, but that's not true of everywhere. So I've seen a lot of residential elevators, you know, be put into these homes. We want to make it as senior safe as possible. Right. And then how many kitchens are there typically in these Still one kitchen. Still one kitchen. Yep. You want it. I don't want home like. I want it to be a home. Mm -hmm. Like I want them to actually like that's the kitchen. If they want to go get something out of the fridge, go get something out of the fridge. You know, right. like this is your home. This is where you live. A, a communal living room. We have we have students who have homes that have salons, movie theaters, uh, game rooms, workout yeah. rooms. Like these are luxurious homes, you know, in good parts of town. And you can have those fun amenities, but minimum, you're going to want sitting room, dining room, living room, kitchen, you know, all the regular things. Yeah. We I'm have. just trying to picture this because, you know, honestly, I haven't been through a lot of these. You know, yeah. like the ones I've been through are like sober living houses or, yeah. um, uh, you know, where they're taking care of like kids in need. Right. Yeah. And they have the same setup, but like shared spaces. There's, yeah, there's a lot of shared spaces, but, you know, it's drawn out the same so, so yeah. there's someone always say oh this would be great for assisted living it's like i have no idea if this would be great for assisted living <laughs> or not right but those are yeah. kind of things that are kind of going through my head that's the reason why i'm asking these questions yeah so all right so demographics yeah step one yep what after that what after, after that research then what so getting the physical home that is best suited for this larger footprint as many bedrooms and bathrooms as you can already have you know finding out your state maximum um like i said it's going to fall somewhere between six and sixteen so once you know that, getting that suitable property mm -hmm. um, and then really hiring your licensed administrator, that's like your key player. If you want to be hands off in this, then you've got to have somebody really, really strong in that position. Yeah. Um, one thing I, I remember a long time ago, earlier part of my career, we we're talking to people about, you know, doing assisted living. Yeah. And if I recall correctly, the biggest bottleneck was the licensing from the state. Oh, is that here in, here in Arizona? In Arizona. You know, the states all have like ranges of how long, like California on their website right now says six months. Mm -hmm. But there's a, still a ton of things you're going to do in those six months while you're prepping to get it licensed. So yeah. I'm like, that's fine. Um, I've never really seen anything take longer than six months. Most states are on like a three to four month. But um, there's also ways you can go about that. I am very much a people person. And my dad taught me this. Um, do not submit it via mail. You get your butt down to the office. Mm -hmm. You walk it in. You hand it to that person. You bring them some brownies or cookies or a coffee or something. Yeah. And then you ask them, when can you come over and do the inspection? I'd love you to, oh, you've got one in Chandler next week? I'm in Chandler. Come on over. Right. You know, and get them to bump you up to the top. 
when it's mailed in, it's put at the bottom of a pile. Mm -hmm. They don't know who you are. And, you know, good luck to you. That's when it's taken six months. But you can sometimes expedite that process. Not always. But yeah, it could have just been really bad intel. Or I could just be remembering entirely wrong, you know. <laughs> uh, but I, I believe it was they, they made it sound like it was like winning the lottery. If you're able oh, to get no, the permit. no, no, no. Okay. All right. So step one, demographic, re demographic research. Step two, finding the, the, the a quality licensed administrator. So yes. where does where do I go about finding one of those? Yeah, I mean, indeed, Craigslist, targeted newspapers. So there's like a lot of them then? This is a, this is a career that exists. Yes. Yeah, CNAs, okay. HHAs, those are usually people who are also licensed administrators. Mm -hmm. Every state has different requirements for what you need. It's typically to be 18 or 21 with a GED with this state licensing. Got it. So you can even go to community colleges. A lot of community colleges are adding in caregivers and administrator programs mm -hmm. and get a list of fresh graduates. Or this is a really tight knit industry. So talking to other people who are homeowners, operators, or placement agents, geriatric doctors, nurses, elder law attorneys, saying, who do you know who might be looking for a job? Really, word of mouth is a great way to find people yeah. as well. One of the things, especially in Arizona, we're probably fortunate yeah. because this is like the place for older yeah. people. One of two places. There are 3,000 RAL homes in Maricopa County alone. Yeah. That's insane. There's only 30,000 in the entire country. <laughs> And we have 3,000 in one county. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised, right? Between Arizona and Florida, we just kind of go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.